Hi, John here. If you've ever wondered how gas is taken out of the ground, refined, then pumped underground again prior to being distributed to your home, then this is the video for you. So before we talk about underground storage, let's have a quick look at a process flow diagram. We can see furthest to the left we have the production stage, then in the middle we have transmission, and then furthest to the right we have distribution, which represents the final stage of gas delivery. As you can see, gas comes from an oil and gas well, or a gas well. There's then some separation where the water or the oil is taken out of the gas stream. Some of the gas will then be vented or flared. When I say vented, I mean the gas is vented to atmosphere, or flared means we vent it to atmosphere, but we actually ignite the gas as we vent it and it combusts. Obviously, we don't really want to vent or flare very often because this represents a product loss and product loss means money loss and also a drop in overall efficiency so you won't see this happening all the time in the past it was very typical to continually vent or continually flare gas from oil rigs but due to the rising cost of gas this is no longer economically viable and they're trying to restrict this as much as possible at the next stage we've got a gas processing plant or a refinery here the products are removed some non-hydrocarbon gases are removed, some is returned to the field, and again we'll have vented or flared gas. Now we'll get to the transmission stage. The transmission stage is the stage we're going to be mostly interested in today. You can see there's several compressor stations, which we're going to have a look at in a moment. You can also see there's an underground storage reservoir, which we'll also have a look at in a moment. And then there's mainline sales, where the gas is sold in bulk, and the odorant stage. The odorant stage is where we add odorizer to the gas stream. There's a good reason for this. Natural gas in its natural form doesn't smell. However, it will still combust if mixed in air and given an ignition source. So what we actually do is add a very strong smelling odorizer to the gas stream. Typically this will be sulfur, or it will have a very strong egg smell, which is the sulfur. And then that way, if the gas does leak in your home, you'll be able to smell it. What we want to try and avoid is gas leaking in people's homes and they don't actually know about it. At the next stage we've got the natural gas company. They distribute the gas to factories and warehouses and homes etc. Some of the gas may go to an LNG storage facility and typically then this could go on to ships etc and be discharged to foreign markets or as exports. Let's have a look at the different types of underground storage facilities and why we actually need them. So, here's an image of what looks to be some sort of mountainous scene with a few trees. The grey line running between the trees actually represents a gas pipeline. The yellow lines going into the earth also represent a gas pipeline. So what we'll do, we'll have a quick look now at the different storage methods that are often employed for storing gas underground. The letter A represents salt caverns. Salt caverns are actually layers of salt deep in the earth and what we'll do if we wanted to create a salt cavern is drill a hole and then pump water down into the salt cavern. Now the water softens up the salt and then you can pump the salt water mix out. And if all goes well you'll end up with a cylindrical shaped cavern very similar to a BA bottle that a fireman would wear or what divers wear when they go swimming. Unfortunately, it doesn't always work out like that and you end up with some rather ugly looking caverns as well. The downside to that is it's quite difficult to get the gas out in some areas because the gas doesn't naturally flow out. Salt caverns are very good though because you can get a lot of gas out quickly and you can pump a lot of gas in quickly. B represents underground mines. The mines are abandoned but they're deep enough down and covered by a layer of non-porous rock and that means you can pump the gas into the mines and use them as storage vessels. C is aquifers. Aquifers, again, they're porous rock. And what you can do, you can pump the gas down, the gas will seep through the porous rock, and there'll be a layer of non-porous rock on top, which prevents the gas leaking up to the surface. Letter D is a depleted reservoir. This is actually where we have pumped oil out of the ground in the past, and there'll now be an empty space in the earth and this is perfect for storing gas. And finally letter E, which is a hard rock cavern. 
These are empty spaces within hard rock, non-porous, where we can pump gas up to high pressures. But why would we actually want to store gas underground in the first place? Well, there's a very good reason. In winter, we actually need a lot of gas. And in summer, we don't really need that much gas at all. Now think about it, in winter, when you're at home and you're a little bit cold, you turn the boiler on and then you want to heat up your home. And we also need gas often for heating up hot water, etc. Now in summer, you don't need gas for heating up your home because the ambient temperature is warmer. So the demand in winter is very high and the demand in summer for gas is very low. So what we need is some way to store the gas in the summer and discharge it quickly in the winter. It's not possible to get the gas straight from a gas refinery to your home or from the well to your home in a short space of time, especially not when the demand's high. So what we'll do, we'll store the gas underground after it's been discharged from the gas processing plant. Then we can extract the gas from underground storage very quickly and deliver it to consumers during winter months. This ensures that the gas gets to where it needs to go at the appropriate time and we don't have shortages in winter, which would mean people wouldn't be able to heat their homes and that could become very uncomfortable if you're living somewhere that goes down to minus 20 where I live, for example. Anyway, that's why we store gas underground. So what we'll do now, we'll have a quick look at a gas compressor station and just how we get the gas underground in the first place. 